Hi, this is a tutorial series where I teach you how to make a puzzle game that uses the camera. This whole project is done using only vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas. And a small part of it, this one here, is done using PHP and MySQL to save and load scores from the database. The game works on desktop computers, but also on mobile devices like phones and tablets. By following this series, you'll learn many useful things that you can later apply in other projects. Last time, we worked on gameplay elements like the menu, timer, and how to check if the puzzle is finished. But we only implemented the functionality, so today I'll teach you how to make the interface look more presentable. Let's begin. We continue with the code from last time. Let me just put Mr. Chibi-san here again. Now we'll make this part look better. First, let's put the button below like this. Now we can move to the CSS file and position these in the center of the screen. We say that the items should be 50% from the left and 50% from the top. Now, if we leave it like this, the items will move here, so their top left corner is in the center screen. But we would like them to be here, so we need to add transform translate minus 50% minus 50%. And now we get this. Now, the text isn't clearly readable as such. Let's add a semi-transparent background here, like this. Better. Now we can align the items to center, like this. We can give the items some spacing around by setting a value for the padding. I'm using a value of 5 e. min here which means that the spacing will be 5% of the minimum between the width and height of the window. I also set the black semi-transparent border here as well. Now we can make the button look better. We'll give it a larger font size and a bluish background color. and white text. Good. We can make the button more user-friendly by changing its properties when mouse is hovering it. I'll make it have an orange background and black text in this case. Okay, now when I hover it changes style. You can't see my mouse here now for some reason, but it's there and it looks like the default arrow. To make it look like a hand cursor, we can change it here in CSS. Nowadays, there are many fancy features you can choose when styling elements. Like, you can easily add animations with the transition property. By setting this 0.3 second duration here, we will get a short animation from one style to the other on hover. I think it's really nice. I don't like this border here, so I'll remove it and I will make the button corners round by setting a small radius. The font size, apart from this button, is rather small, so we'll work on that next. First, I change it to Arial. I think that the serifs don't look very good in this case. Okay, now I'll make it bigger, same as the font size on the button. I think it's okay now. Let's see how it would look like on mobiles as well. It's definitely readable. I think it could be a bit bigger, but this will also do for now. The text on the select component is not affected yet, so we need to specifically add the font size there as well. Okay, switching back to full screen now. I'll change the mouse to look like a pointer when hovering this select component as well and style this element to be more in line with the button. So, no border, a small radius, and we need to remove the outline here as well. Okay, let's try testing the game now. I press start and... It's not what we want, really. This menu should disappear at this stage, and only the timer should remain visible. So, I will go back to the HTML 
and take out this element from here. Then in the JavaScript file, we go to the restart function and set the display of the menu items to none. Now I refresh, press the start button and the menu is gone, but the timer is gone as well. It should be there. Let's debug. I switch to the elements panel and it is there. It is just below the canvas. So we need to change its style in CSS. I want it on the top of the screen. So I will change positioning to absolute, set the zero top, and let's have it center screen. So I set left to 50% and I use the transform translate method again, but only on the left side. Now I refresh, press start, and the timer is there. Do you think this game is nice? Have you tried playing the hard or insane difficulty levels? I did, but I'm still not sure I have the right strategy. Check it out in the link in the description and let me know what you think. Next, I'll show you how to draw a logo using PowerPoint. You can use a number of different software to do this. I'm using PowerPoint just because it's installed on most student computers. So hopefully you have it too. I use the rounded rectangle tool to start drawing a camera. I can adjust the corner radius like this. Now I make a copy of the item by holding down the control key and dragging it to a new location. I will do a similar thing with circles now. I will change the colors to just black and white for the circles. And I will use the align tools to make sure they are just the way I want them to be. I change the color of the rectangles drawn earlier to black and move the circles on top. Newer features of PowerPoint have these helper lines appearing and they are useful, I think. But if you don't have them and want to have proper alignment, just use the align tools we used earlier. Now, I'm happy with how this looks. So I will copy it and paste it as an image. We will need to use it later in this format. But now I want to draw a small puzzle piece. So I start off with a rectangle about this size and I draw an oval here as well. I will shape this oval to look more like the connecting part of puzzle pieces. And I do that by editing the points of this shape. Right click, edit points. It's useful if you understand how Bezier curves work at this stage. Okay, I'm happy with this. I copy it, rotate it on its side, and merge these three items into a single shape by going to Merge Shapes and Union. Now I'll place this on top of the image copy of our camera, align it a bit better, and duplicate both objects on the right. For the first copy, we select first the camera image, then holding Shift, press on the puzzle piece as well. Go to Merge Shapes, and subtract. For the second copy, also select the camera image first, then holding shift, press on the puzzle piece as well, go to merge shapes and intersect. I now move this piece into place so that it looks like we're just completing the puzzle. Now select these two objects, copy and paste as image. At this point, we don't need all the other items anymore. We just keep this one as the icon and we'll use it to make a title next. I just create a text box and write puzzle cam here in all caps. I set the font to Arial black to be similar to that in the HTML page and increase the size of the font. I then make the P larger and I want it to be the same size as the camera. So a bit of trial and error goes here.
and when we're happy with it, apply the same size to letter C and we're almost done. We can now copy everything and paste as an image once again. But you'll see that the image has some weird transparent margins here. It's how PowerPoint works when text boxes are involved, unfortunately. But we can crop that out using the cropping tool. Resize the image to the size we want. Right click and save as picture. Then I name it as title.png and add it to the same directory as our code. Speaking of which, we can now add the new image to the HTML file like this. And I'll set its width to 90% inline here because there's no other style I will add to this. Then refreshing makes the image appear. I think it will look better if we do one small change in CSS. I will make the whole menu wider like this. In this way, the title image is significantly larger than the other text and the drop down for the difficulty moved on the same line as the label. I think it's better like this. That's it for today. Please like and share this video if you thought it was useful. Next time, we'll add sounds into the system. See you guys.